The Social Value Act places a responsibility on public sector organisations to consider social value in contracts that they let. Suppliers can therefore be put under pressure to demonstrate how revenue they will earn will be delivered back in a tangible way. Social value asks the question, if a pound is spent on delivery of services, how can that same pound be used to provide a wider benefit to the community? Issues that have been highlighted to date show that while the Act enables public sector organisations to challenge suppliers to demonstrate how a proportion of revenue earned from contracts will be delivered back to the local area, very few local authorities have actually been proactive of the Act to date. This is an interesting phenomenon, as given as many local public sector organisations, Birmingham in particular, are experiencing severe financial austerity, requiring them to cut non-statutory services like libraries and leisure facilities and reduce eligibility for statutory services like social care. A study I conducted in collaboration with the Social Value Portal in July 24 highlighted these anxieties. Most worrying being that fewer than 30% of local authorities Responding had a policy in place to guide procurement and contracting teams, and some were unaware of the Act altogether. In the summer of 2014, I was approached by the Centre for Citizenship, Enterprise and Governance to contribute my research to date in the area of social value legislation and industry frameworks, alongside personal thoughts and recommendations to two keynote reports, Social Value in Birmingham 2014 and Social Value in Public Procurement. This led to the opportunity of highlighting not only my own research but raising the profile of both the Business School and BCU and collaborate with leaders in the field and groundbreaking pilot projects. The reports were circulated to a database of circa 1,700 key stakeholders in the private public, third and government sectors, and anyone who would be interested in the report can contact the CCEG for digital copies. A very common mistake in procurement that is strictly illegal is that stating that preference will be given to suppliers under a laudable hyperlocality agenda, where local purchasing and local spend is encouraged. Through the natural use of social value as a discriminator, bidders with more social impact can, however, be preferred. And naturally, these are often those with greater local provenance and history of local delivery and community benefits. So choosing a social impact metric that measures hyperlocality then becomes key. Ironically, Birmingham City Council does not appear... <coughs> to adhere to any existing industry standard to measure social value, and thus has no specific handle on its critical impacts, be they positive or negative, on the environment, society and the economy. The response to the report has been extremely positive, and thus have been invited to collaborate on upcoming pilots with the public sector organisations over the next 12 months. The pilots will introduce a proposed model to raise capital for a multi-stakeholder environment of public, private and third sector engagement. Following the lead of India's 2% CSR law, investigating how capital could be raised in relation to business tenders and being factored into creating wealth to be distributed through a 1 or 2% social value level. Alongside this, to highlight potential ways of measuring social value using a revolutionary new metric, the social earnings ratio, that allows for benchmarking, giving a level playing field where contracts are awarded not purely on financial value, but also on social value creation for the good of the community and society. Since the implementation of the Social Value Act, Birmingham Council have created the Birmingham Social Value Policy and the Birmingham Business Charter for Social Responsibility, 
which require businesses to meet a list of measurable conditions. However, at this stage, both Birmingham and other local authorities in England do not appear to have adopted any industry standards in measuring social value impact. An excellent example of the Social Value Act in action, which Birmingham could well take a lead from, is that of Manchester. And a condition of the planning approval of Manchester City's new £200 million train facility, a particular interest in terms of social value, was a condition of the planning approval, was that the project benefits the wider community. With £3 million towards building a new swimming pool, three acres of land donated, and the building of 600 new homes. Birmingham City Council has created the Birmingham Business Charter for Social Responsibility, a very laudable move, with a set of six core measurable criteria. However, the reality today is that this has been more of a theoretical exercise as the last figures of October 2014 showed only circa 100 businesses, most of those corporates, had signed up to the Charter. And in fact today, only five small providers, or a half a percent of the roughly 1,000 that dealt with the Council last year, have signed up. It is very important for the micro-businesses that wish to tender for work to be aware that contracts, regardless of size, or value will be measured against the criteria. So it is essential to sign up for the Charter and thus be able to show this in the documentation. One action Birmingham City Council has instigated is producing a social value policy for the procurement process to actively embrace allowing micro and small businesses to tender for contracts. However, interviews to date have highlighted a great uncertainty in the small business sector. The contracts will be awarded to large organisations with scant regard for the social value policy. A proposed case study of micro-businesses that do deliver social value in Birmingham will look at how the adoption of a social value policy by the Council raises many challenges for the small business sector that tend for procurement contracts. To what extent are they aware of the Social Value Act, the Birmingham Charter for Business, Social Responsibility and the Social Value Policy of Birmingham City Council? By their very nature, micro-businesses are rich in social value although they may not be aware or be able to articulate this or demonstrate this to satisfy the six principal criteria put forward in the Birmingham Social Business Charter. And thus, measures need to be explored so they should not be at a disadvantage. In conclusion, as legislation to implement social value in local authority procurement is a new phenomenon, there is only now literature starting to emerge on the impact of the Social Value Act in the procurement process. Most of the literature to date investigated is produced by local authorities themselves or organisations employed by the local authority. So there is a risk of bias. The purpose of this body of research is to be independent and look at the phenomena from the perspective of the case studies and pilots to ascertain if the procurement process, driven by legislation, <coughs> is a differentiator in securing ongoing tenders and is social value created in the community. The research is intended to develop a theoretical understanding of social impact which is capable of building an intangible state of mind that creates increased social value. At this stage of the research, it is uncertain how the Social Value Act will actually affect behaviour. However, treating social impact as a quasi-independent variable, that theoretically it is, is intended to cause consequences that are assumed to be positive, creating social value, 
but could, paradoxically, be negative, allows developing a study. Thank you for your attention, and I hope the presentation has given you all some food for thought. There is a poster in the main hall, covering the main points of the presentation, for those who would like to revisit the subject area of social value. Thank you. Thank you.